What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna take a look at this 2024 Jeep Wrangler. This one is the Sahara 4xE, finished off in bikini metallic. MSRP is $64,800. So let's go ahead, pop open the latches, see what is gonna power the 4xE. We got the manual latch right in the center. We pull that open. So underneath the hood, this has a two liter inline four cylinder turbocharged engine with that hybrid system. Cranking out a net horsepower of 375 and net torque is 470. Got the eight speed automatic transmission, four wheel drive system as well. And it runs on a 17.2 gallon fuel tank. Now this Jeep can also tow about 3,500 pounds. Curb weight is 5,100 pounds. So if we go ahead, just manually lock these back into place like any Jeep Wrangler. Moving on to styling, we have the nice LED headlights and I like for 2024, they've updated the grill. You have the traditional seven bars, forward facing camera. I like all these silver trim as well. And then the body color surrounding it really makes this look super nice. The 4 by e is gonna give you those blue hooks on the front of this bumper. You have a plastic bumper, but you got the nice fog lights along with more silver trim skid plate down below, and then your massive fender flares, traditional for any Wrangler. You got the LED lights in them as well. Of course, this design hasn't changed since the beginning, but overall, it's a really good looking off-roader. Up on the hood, you're gonna see a nice raised portion with those rubber bumpers, that way you can fold down the windshield. The color looks stunning in the sunlight, has more of a green tint to it. I feel like it looks a little bit blue on camera. You also have a nice set of 20 inch wheels, and the center hub even has the old school Wrangler in the same color. So I like that blue accent. Got the same blue on the Wrangler. You have your Jeep logo, Sahara. Trail rated badge, of course. No more big old school antenna. That is a nice touch to see. And then of course the side profile. This is incredibly boxy. The four door looks really good, really good proportions. I mean, it's cool. It is a cool looking off-roader. You got your plastic door handles, plastic on the mirrors. Then some black trim surrounding the windows and our three-piece body colored roof. It is a plastic roof hard top, removable as you would expect. Doors are also removable as well. And then you can see just a little bit of a nice sharp body line throughout the side profile. Really cool looking this color. Fender flare in back. You have your exposed hinges back here, your plastic rear bumper. You're also gonna see your trailer hitch, all of your connections, and then a blue tow hook. You can see the 4 by e logo. This side of your grab handle, fuel cap is on the left side, and you're gonna have a full-size spare with a camera in the center. You also can see the third brake light. And then opening this up, all manual, of course. You can see what kind of space we have. We have some dealer items here. We got the floor mats, cargo cover as well. You can see with the seat down, this kind of space you're gonna have. And then with the seat up as well. I also like you have some specs written down on that part. So if we go ahead and close it all manually, not too hard to do. If we take a look all up in front, this is where you charge it. This is a plug-in hybrid vehicle. That is your charge port right there. So really easy and convenient to gain access to. And then if we go through the side now, with the seat folded down flat, you're gonna see just how much storage space you're gonna get. Pretty nice the way it's designed. Lift it up. The headrest does go down and up depending on driver visibility. So it's a nice touch to be able to do that. There's not really storage underneath the seat since we have a whole battery pack. However, of course, flipping that up, you're able to then flip that down. So climbing into the back, 2024 did update the fabric material. So it's adding a really cool design to it. You can open this down. You have your armrest and cup holders. Of course, this can seat three people back here. You do get climate control vents, different plugs, storage, and then storage on the backs of these seats. And then I do like how at five foot 11, I have plenty of legroom and foot room. Headroom is ample and you have a lot of visibility. So it's honestly a nice place to be, not bad at all. This could be a family SUV. So pretty nice to be back here. Climbing out, it's a little hard. My foot kind of gets stuck sometimes. So it is on the smaller side getting in and out of right here, but nonetheless, still pretty practical. And then front seat now. You're gonna see the contrast stitching. You can grab under here to help lift these doors off the hinge. We have storage as well. Release handle, lock and unlock and mirror controls. We have manual controls on the seat. Go up and down, your lumbar, as well as recline. And then the cool looking fabric with contrast stitching. Sahara is stitched up top as well. 
These are really nice updated seats. I really like the new fabric material. And then climbing inside, when we go ahead and start it up, you don't really hear the engine or anything given this is a hybrid. So it just starts up in the electric mode basically. But from here we have a nice black leather steering wheel with more contrast stitching. We have controls on the left side for Bluetooth and audio as well as the screen in the center. And then we have all of our cruise control on the right side. So taking a look at the gauge cluster, we have the tack on the left, screen in the center, charge and percentage on the right side as well. And then if I scroll through quite a bit of this information, you can see a lot throughout the vehicle. Continuing down, you have a few more things you can take a look at. So I do like how you can pretty much monitor everything within this Wrangler. Nice to see all that. We have the stock on the right side for windshield wipers, turn signal on the left. And then down below all that, you can see our fuel cap release and then three different drive modes. If you toggle between these, it'll change how the car is gonna drive. Of course, hybrid will use a blend of the engine and gas. You have EV mode, and then this one right here is gonna make it to where it charges up the battery. Headlight controls down there as well. A little bit of storage up on top, and then more of that new fabric. That really updates the dashboard, it looks really cool. Center infotainment screen as well as the new update for 2024. Home icon, you're gonna see navigation, and you can of course adjust all of this, so you can really customize it nicely. You have media, all of your climate controls will pop up as well. Phone integration, full screen navigation. And then going under vehicle, this is pretty cool. In this setting right now, you can see all sorts of different settings. If we go ahead and toggle the controls, we can toggle your two different cameras, front and rear. And then if you exit out of there, in dashboard, we have our off-road pages. You can monitor a lot of how the off-road capabilities, gauges, pitch and roll meter, go back to that front view camera if needed. And then I really like how if you go into e-hybrid, you can see some of the information for the battery system. You can see the schedules as well, driving history, power flow, which is pretty cool. And then under apps, you can get all sorts of different icons where you're able to adjust them, add them to your favorites lists and things like that. Now down below, we have two of your air vents and then you do have physical climate controls. So you can adjust your fan speed right here. You don't always have to go into it on the screen. Volume on the left, heated steering wheel and seats, more of those icons. We have the max regeneration for the battery system, 12 volt, you have all your window controls, media as well with a few different plugs, extra auxiliaries if you're gonna add lights and winches, and then our four wheel drive system. We have two high, four high auto and part time, neutral and then a four low. More storage all down below along with a manual parking brake. And then you can open this up for two different storage areas. So nice to see, a lot of storage in this truck. A little bit of storage down below. And then one last look at the interior. Nice update for 2024. Basically the screen and the fabrics have been updated very well. Plastic roof just finished off in the white. You have all of your latches, some speakers and dome lights, and then a thin mirror with garage door buttons. All right, we are setting off now in the 4xe on the road. I'm in electric mode. As you can tell, it's just EV mode, driving around in basically an electric car. Pretty cool. It's not exactly fast or anything when you're just driving this in electric, but it's nice to use this, especially, you know, like slow speed things. It's just a really cool way to drive the car. In eSave, it'll really do a good job charging up the battery pack. So I think they've done a good job, especially for 2024, making the hybrid system work a lot better. So now the engine is gonna kick on and make it to where you're gonna be able to hear the engine and keep that battery pack as charged as possible. And then of course, hybrid mode is gonna do a pretty good blend, just making it to where you can kind of use a blend of both, saving some gas if needed. But overall, I like the 4 by E. I think it's a really cool concept because it gives you that EV stuff along with the normal gas engine. If we get out of the parking lot, find some main roads again. Uh, when you are getting up to speed in the 4 by E, it's still a Wrangler at the end of the day. You know, it's a little on the noisy side. It doesn't exactly handle all too well. So it's, you know, not the best on-road vehicle. Visibility is pretty decent, actually. You have a lot of windows all around it, which makes it really helpful. And then when you get up to speed, with the engine and that hybrid system, this thing's got some power. So it's really nice how this thing is quick. Not quite a 392 quick, but nonetheless, it does a great job just getting up to some speed. 
the eight speed is smooth enough. You know, again, the Wrangler is not exactly the most on-road capable vehicle. It's a little on the noisy side, a little, just a little rough around the edges. This thing shines off-roading, but when you're on-road, it's still a nice place to be. The technology works really Canceled. well. Okay, thank you for that. Technology works pretty good. I like this new screen. I like how simple everything is. And when you're in here, it's decently comfortable. The seats are a little firm. They're not exactly sport bucket seats or anything like that, but they're comfortable enough. You have good visibility, good armrests, and it's still a vehicle you can drive on the road, be comfortable, fit stuff in here, fit people in here, and really enjoy it. I think the hybrid really does make this much better on road especially being the Sahara. You know, the Rubicon is gonna be a little bit more rough around the edges on the road, given the suspension and the tire differences. The Sahara is more for the street. However, of course, it's still trail rated. It can still do the off-road capable aspects and things you're gonna to wanna to do with a vehicle like this. So it's a nice blend. You kind of got a good blend of everything with it. There's a little bit of wind noise and road noise, but it's comfortable enough for what you're gonna expect, along with providing you with something fun to take off roads, take the roof off, take the doors off. And I think the hybrid assist just adds to the fun factor with this when you can put it into electric mode or the you know different modes there to play with it. So pretty cool vehicle to be in. Yeah.